Ladies and gentlemen, Blue School number 27, Eric Schoenstrom. So in a very short time, all of you will be held captive by your own life. You might be in an elevator on the way to your very challenging job that you get upon graduating from Champlain. Maybe you'll be getting the oil changed in your crappy 2001 Toyota Corolla with the cracked windshield. Or maybe you'll be stuck in an airport terminal. Doesn't matter. But there you'll be, feeling good about yourself as you travel in the elevator up to your challenging job that you're so proud of. And all of a sudden, the pit of your stomach will begin to sink. Your palms will start to sweat and the walls will begin to close in. And you begin to ask yourself this question. My God, what am I doing with my life? This is called an existential crisis. And you are all headed for one no matter what. It's, a, it's a, an inspirational lecture. <laughs> in this moment, I'm going to ask you not to do something. Don't take out your phone. You'll be tempted to scroll through Snapchat or Instagram or something else to distract yourself from this moment. Don't do it. Just do that awkward thing instead where you look up at the digital readout of the floors and let the moment take you over. Because this is what it means to be a human being, is to have these moments where we ask ourselves, my God, what am I doing with my life? I'm actually asking that of myself right now. <laughs> so when this moment happens, I can't help you with it. And no one here can. We can't take this moment away from you. But I would like to reframe your question for you. But to do that, I need to talk about the 19th century. I know, you saw that one coming, I'm sure. The 19th century was a time of incredible creativity and innovation. It was a time when the novel reached its zenith, arguably, and we had people like Austin and Bronte explaining the interior of the human world, literally what we experience in our internal landscapes. It was also the time when everything you see around you, the way we communicate, our institutions, our technology, they were founded in the 19th century. It is the foundational place of everything that comprises our lives. However, as you all know, it was also, while a time of creativity and frenetic activity, a time of darkness. It was a time when colonialism spread across the globe. It was a time when environmental destruction of our globe began. During this time, when we began to explore the very capacities of human reason, of compassion and empathy, was also a time when we subjugated, when I say we, I mean Western Europe and America, subjugated people around the world and began to extract resources against their will. So this time of incredible light and darkness was perhaps the most important time in terms of how we're living our lives now. And here's the thing, is that the novel at that time became the voice of conscience. And how did it do that? Well, <clears throat> in order to understand that, we need to ask ourselves the following question. As we stand here on the threshold of the 21st century, are we repeating the evils of the 19th century? So before we talk about the novels, I want to just pitch this to you right now. Look at a map. Don't do it now on your phone. Let the crisis happen. But look at a map later of where colonialism happened, where Western Europe and the Americas subjugated peoples around the world, and look at a map of the people who are denied the digital connectivity that we're all so eager to promote, and you'll find that there's a striking similarity between those two maps. The very people that were subjugated and oppressed through colonialism are the ones who are being left out of the very digital world that we all hope to exploit for our own gains as we enter into our exciting jobs up that elevator. But the thing is, is that during that moment in the elevator, you realize something. You are essentially a speck in the universe, and you're not important. This is what happens in an existential crisis. I don't matter. In the wide swath of infinite space and time, you're nothing. The world is a cold, meaningless place, and so why bother with anything? Did someone just say woo? <laughs> Clearly we have some nihilists here. Um, so this moment's gonna happen regardless, and here's what I'd like to suggest is that the only way to deal with the horrors of the 19th century and make sure they don't repeat themselves in the 21st, the only way to survive this moment without resorting to Snapchat is to read long, incredibly boring novels. Yes, it's true. It's the only prescription that will work, and let me explain why. Novels are salvation. They're the opposite of industry and progress. 
they do something completely different than developing the outside world. They develop your internal landscape. Let's think of some examples from the 19th century since we're talking about it. Currently, I'm reading The Count of Monte Cristo. Raise your hand if you've read it. Raise your hand if you've read the horrible 1,300-page version that hasn't been abridged. It's incredibly painful and boring. In fact, Umberto Eco, a famous Italian novelist, said, the Dumasian novel is a machine for taking us to the agonizing brink of death. That's what you feel reading this novel, and yet I argue that it's the most important experience we can have. Because Alexander Dumas was the grandson of a Haitian slave. And in the 19th century, as a biracial person, he faced all the horrors, and in fact, he personified this duality of the 19th century himself. Or let's talk about the novel Daniel Deronda. Raise your hand if you've read it. The same two people keep raising their hands. Clearly, I'm hanging out with the wrong people. Let's hang out later and get beers. <laughs> Daniel Deronda is incredibly long and incredibly boring, but it focuses on a really important story. Young people having an existential crisis. They also happen to be Jews. And it was a time of virulent anti-Semitism, and George Eliot, the author of that book, gave them nobility and dignity in telling their story. In addition, George Eliot was a pen name. The real name of the author is Marianne Evans. It was a woman fighting against all the patriarchy of the 19th century. But you don't really care about all that because you haven't stopped thinking about that moment in the elevator, have you? That moment that's coming very quickly when you will begin to wonder, my God, what am I doing with my life? The world is a cold, meaningless place, and I don't matter in it. Unfortunately, that's true. I mean, for all of us, right? But by reading novels, we can take that moment and use it. Only novels can show us the folly of our pursuits. Novels remain the great explicators of our own untruths. They remain the great explicators of our own hubris. So, in our rush, our headlong, frenetic quest to be digitally relevant that we have here on campus, I would like to invite you to join me in radical irrelevance. I would like you to, to invite you to join me in dropping out, shutting off your phone, laying on the couch, and reading long, boring 19th century novels. Here's what will happen. First of all, you'll FOMO your pants off because all your friends are gonna be madly posting and tweeting all stuff and you will be out of that equation. But here's what else will happen. When that moment comes, that horrible moment where you're standing in the elevator asking yourself, what am I going to do with my life? You can edit that question. Because the real question at that moment is not what am I going to do with my life, but who am I going to become? And that's what matters, not what you do. So, I can't take away that moment, nor would I want to, because that moment in the elevator, as horrifying as it is, is necessary to becoming fully human, to developing empathy and compassion. So, before we all go off to save the world today, and save the world we should, by the way, I'm not saying not to, we have to save ourselves. And I invite you to join me in radical irrelevance and save ourselves through reading long novels. Thank you, have a good class.